and we are back and it's time for Off the Press and we have been joined by our analyst, Professor Camille Lusani Fage. He's a political analyst. Good morning to you, Prof. Good morning to you, Prof. We may have lost connection with him. Good morning. Okay. Good. Good morning to you, Prof. So good to have you join Prof. us. Good morning. Thank you. Where are you joining us from right now, Prof? Uh, from Kano. Okay. How is Kano this morning? It's a little bit greasy this morning. Okay. All right. So let's, let's start with the Punch newspaper. And the punch is leading with marketers' eye fresh fuel price hike as crude hits $94. And then the writers there, Naruto plants price hike raise concerns over... Okay, I take that again. Naruto plants price hike raises concern over FG's insistence on 617 Naira per liter petrol price. And then operators insist petrol subsidy returning gradually. NNPCL gets three new VPs. Uh, let's start with this, Prof. Nigerians looking at another increment in the price of fuel? Yes. Um, I think this is um, not unexpected, uh, given the fact that... Um, we adopted a policy which says the Naira should find its own uh, value. And, uh, you know, as the dollar rises, so is the cost of uh, importation of uh, foil. So, and that will translate to um, high price uh, in Nigeria because we import what we consume. We import our needs and uh, we import it in dollars. So as the dollar changes, there is bound to be that. But I think um, Nigerians will uh, definitely be at the brunt of that. And uh, there will be hues and cries against uh, this uh, rise in the oil price. Mm -hmm. And right above the masthead, one of the subheadlines there is that 12.5 kg Cooking gas price may hit 18,000 Naira in December. How alarmed yeah. are you with this? Because I am alarmed. I am, I am very much alarmed. I see more than you. Uh, because <laughs> uh, the, cost of, the cost of living uh, is now becoming, you know, very high, very expensive. Mm -hmm. And these are things that uh, will be counterproductive. You know, energy is one of the things that keeps uh, small-scale industries going. Mm -hmm. And now, if it is beyond the reach of uh, Nigerians, I think uh, this will definitely translate into unemployment. It will also translate into, uh, you know, poverty, inflation, and other things, which, you know, will be dangerous for the country because Nigerians will definitely, like I said, grumble about it. And um, we don't know what will be the outcome, but at least I think the government has to do something uh, in order to ensure that uh, life is affordable for Nigerians. All right, so beside that, you have FG Labour Meet today on post-subsidy talks. Yes, I think, you see, the, the Labour... Uh, is now faced with uh, problems and challenges. Already, you know, labor has lost um, its own credibility in the eyes of people. And now there are crucial issues which the labor ought to take the lead. Because otherwise, if you allow Nigerians to come out against the policy, it will be chaotic and dangerous. So I think the labor is the best option uh, for Nigerians, and it is the best option for the government uh, to to see that um, it's uh, you know negotiate with labor and come out with a, a, a very realistic policy. Because otherwise, like I said, you may not have somebody to negotiate with. Then uh, eventually, it is going to be a free for all if uh, there is no forum with which the government can interact with. 
Indeed, um, Labour, unfortunately, as you have said, appears to have lost popularity uh, with the people, and uh, perhaps this they may be looking at using this um, this week's um, planned strike as a way of regaining that that um, that trust that Nigerians used to have in Labour. Do you see that being the case? Yeah, all hope is not lost. Provided the labor will stand firm on the issue. You know why people resign uh, on labor? It's because sometimes the labor will take the lead and halfway they will leave them uh, uh, you know, high and dry, meaning there will be a sort of under table negotiations and the labor, the labor leaders will abandon the cost. So provided the labor is uh, firm on this issue and is consistent. I think that is where it will be able to regain its own lost credibility. But if it follows the usual way, I think that will, this will be the last straw that will break the camel's back. All right. Well, before we leave the punch newspaper, there are lots of interesting headlines. The Amahi Woods presidency as contractors oppose concrete roads. Uh, looking down, you see all that. But the major picture here, the big picture on the face of, uh, on the front page of the punch is NDLEA rescues pregnant teenagers, arrests suspected drug traffickers. You see some of the creative ways that these drug peddlers have continued to employ to traffic their wares, their products. Uh, how, how, how much of a problem is drug abuse in Kano, Prof? Uh, I think drug abuse is uh, here in Kano is a terrible thing because the last statistics that we, we have is that there are about uh, 9 million Nigerians that are uh, within this range and that here in Kano there is about 1.1 million uh, drug abuse uh, Use uh, drug users in Kano, so which means about one ninth of uh, uh, the, the uh, drug use in Nigeria is here in Kano. So it is a very very serious problem. It is a very uh, serious policy challenge uh, to leaders, and uh, not only the state leaders, but I think even the national leaders. Uh, that this issue has to be nipped in the bud. That is a huge percentage. Any idea what could be the cause for this high percentage of you know users in in Kano State or in the North generally? Yeah, there are a lot. There are a lot of things. One is uh, the level of poverty. Uh, you know, uh, if you look at our industrial areas, they are now ghost town, and there uh, is a high drop out of uh, school. And uh, like I say, there is a high level of unemployment, and also there is the issue that politicians uh, use um, kids. I mean, use. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, supply them with drugs and money and the weapons. So they are weaponized uh, by the politicians. All this contributes to that. And uh, there is also gradual decline in the moral values in the uh, kind of here, the culture, uh, you know, and other things. And uh, above all, you see, there are people who import uh, drugs into uh, the state and uh, the government doesn't seem to be active in either being proactive about it or acting to it. Uh, it seems like uh, the leaders turn uh, their pace away from this issue. So that is why it is gradually becoming, uh, a, you know, a, a serious policy issue here in Kano. Okay, let's move to some of the headlines on uh, the Guardian newspaper. And top there is we have uh, the CBN stop officials on tightrope as special investigation peaks. Remember that the dragnet of the uh, investigative panel as it is, uh, or the special investigator into the CBN affairs uh, is, 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 is widened. And now even drivers are included. Everybody at the top uh, echelon of that uh, establishment is included. So... Everybody is on their toes. I'd like your comment on what is happening to the CBN and if you think the right approach is being used. 
Uh, I think it is uh, the right approach because one of the problems that we have in Nigeria is that whenever we have um, any uh, problem, whether it is criminal or whatever in nature, uh, we just tend to publicize it in the newspaper and that will be the end of it. But if we take the step like what is happening now to objectively uh, you know, investigate and go down into who the detail of it. And now once we get the information, uh, we allow the law to take its own course. I think this will serve as a major deterrent to uh, a, a similar issues. And uh, it will also be able to restore what has been, uh, you know, embezzled. And uh, it will be able to punish those who are culpable. So I think this will serve the law better, and I think this is uh, on the right course, provided that, one, it is not being used just for witch hunting. Secondly, because uh, before, uh, if the results, whatever the outcome is uh, uh, judiciously and justifiably used in order to uh, take the appropriate policy action. Okay, still on the CBN, they are making a move now uh, to collect or recover the COVID-19 loans from beneficiaries, and the beneficiaries are complaining. What is your take? Yeah, I think uh, loans are loans, so people have to pay back. But uh, the usual Nigerian factor, I think, uh, will start the issues and leave it uh, there and uh, there will be or there will definitely going to be uh, scapegoats in that world and there will be secret cows in in the place in other words uh maybe the recovery will deal with a uh, small uh you know debtors but uh the big uh, fish will be allowed to go scotch free and uh, that is why we will be dancing in one place if the law is not equitable. If the law is not fair to all, I think this is why we'll continue to have similar problems and challenges in our own uh, society. Now, Serap is suing uh, the federal government and saying that uh, those ministers who were former governors should stop collecting life pensions from their states uh, to show that they are ready to do something for our economy to grow and the people to have a new lease of life. And some people are of the opinion that that should not even be a, a case. Uh, Serap has no case. What do you think? I think Serap and all Nigerians should have a case on this issue. Because by our law, you know, once somebody retires, uh, he doesn't have to earn another salary somewhere. Yeah, but uh, here in Nigeria, you know, they, they are getting the like, such part uh, pension and they will now go into other political uh, office and then also earn a salary there so i think this issue of sarah should have been uh, the the issue of concern to all nigerians because it's part of what is draining the public funds i mean public pass and that is why uh, we don't have uh, the resources to uh, you know, uh, take uh, measures on, in Nigeria. And that is why, you see, the government is always turning the blame of, uh, on Nigeria. Um, due to this, uh, we see that any uh, any time we have a budget, about 70% of the budget goes on recurrent expenditure. So I think this is something that, uh, to me, not only Sarah, but all Nigerians should support the idea of, uh, you know, uh, cutting this uh, unnecessary, uh, you know, pension for political uh, office holders. Because after all, they are Nigerians. They come out in the, the name that they are there to serve us. So why should they now make it a duty uh, to, you know, siphon the national resources, both legally and illegally? And this is uncalled for. You don't find similar things anywhere in other places. But here in Nigeria, it is becoming, it has become part of the law, and which I think we should be worried about it. Okay. In the United Nations General Assembly, the 78th United Nations General Assembly, it has been discovered that the SDGs are only, uh, only have 15% uh, on track. 15% is quite a small number, and this is supposed to be like a guide to a better future for our world. Uh, what is your 
uh, thought, what are your thoughts about the fact that only 15% are on track? I think this is very alarming uh, because 15% is so insignificant in any uh, policy measures. Take, let alone this is a worldwide issue, uh, SDG is a worldwide issue, which means what it uh, shows is that the level of corruption is uh, so pervasive that uh, you monies are expropriated, I mean appropriated, and they are being expropriated by some people. So I think this is a very alarming thing, uh, which uh, shows that uh, just 15% of uh, uh, the, the money used is, is what is uh, being implemented. So I think um, this is not a, a welcome development. Okay, final um, headline from The Guardian, even though there are so many others, is uh, uh, the worrisome fact that uh, the Oshun state governor and his entourage, as it is, uh, escaped a plane crash. And he is suspecting sabotage. Please comment on that. No, but uh, I think if it is sabotage, it is uh, a dangerous thing for Nigeria because uh, political assassinations, uh, which means are coming back, and this is dangerous for the country. So I hope and pray that it is not sabotage. Perhaps it is, uh, you know, part of malfunction or other natural thing. But if it were. Uh, a sabotage, then it is dangerous. So I think what the government should do, both the state and the federal government, is to investigate into the issue and find out what is the real cause. Now, if it is a sabotage, then they can, they should and they must trace who are involved and now deal to them according to the law. Because otherwise, this is going to derail us and this is going to be a very serious uh, problem for the country. Okay. All right, let's go to Nature News. Nature News leads with heavy rainfall in Lagos causes widespread flooding, chaos. That's the picture you're seeing right in front of Nature News. On uh, over the weekend, uh, Lagos residents experienced great flooding in different parts of the state. Horrible stories were told. Horrible videos were seen. What, what did you experience in Kano? Did you experience rainfall over the weekend? And do you have the challenge of flooding whenever it rains heavily in Kano State? Yes, right now it is even drizzling where I am. And uh, because of um, the global warming mm -hmm. and because of uh, lack of uh, proper sanitation, most of the gutters are chucked up. So that is why we have flooding. And uh, also, uh, you know, some of the coasts are man-made because um, we don't take care, uh, you know, of the uh, environment in mm -hmm. such a way that, uh, you know, once ever we have uh, flooding, uh, it becomes very disastrous. Uh, well, like I said, the gutters are chopped up and, uh, you know, we have so many buildings blocking the road, uh, the way of the uh, re re water flow. And other policies, we have refugees, uh, refuge in so many places. So I think this is what contributes to that. But actually, the issue of, so, of global, global warming is a major issue uh, in this weather change, which I think the... Uh, leaders should take proactive measures and see that um, uh, we have early warning devices and uh, we see also how we can, uh, you know, prevent uh, disasters from coming because this has been a regular, uh, a recurrent uh, issue. And uh, so I think we ought to plan ahead of uh, time. The canals should be dredged. People should be sensitized. People should be made to realize the need to keep the gutters clean, dispose their waste properly. This should be ongoing campaigns, really, especially considering the fact that most of our people or some of our people are not um, lettered, mm. so to speak. And they need some sort of um, motivation to be constantly reminded. We, 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 it's quite painful to see us go through this motion on a yearly basis, really. I mean, we should be moving away. Yeah, we know that almost, uh, in almost every part of the, of the world you find flooding from time to time, but 
situations that can be avoided really should be avoided. Yeah, and that's by the people, but what of the government as well, they should also do what they need to do because we've been talking about the Cameroon Dam, for instance, mm -hmm. and all they keep saying year after year is for people to leave their ancestral lands and go to somewhere safe. Meanwhile, there's a solution that could have been brought since 1982 when Cameroon built their own dam and mm -hmm. we were expected to build our own dams to mitigate the effects of this flooding. But well, it is the way it is. Yeah, well, the riders there, commercial bike drivers swept away, many displaced. Neymar provides emergency response to 200, 200 flood victims. This is so sad. All right, moving forward, you have FG will work with governors to harness solid mineral resources. That's the minister there, Dele Alake. Um, good news. Um, are you excited about the appointment of Dele Alake? And do you see him as someone who will be able to harness solid mineral resources uh, in the country? You are, you are in the north there, and we know that mining, illegal mining, is a major challenge in that part of the country. Yeah, you know, I'm a little bit upbeat that uh, the minister says uh, he's going to uh, face this uh, problem. But I think the, the powerful cabal around the issue may not, I mean, they may be far beyond his uh, control. Um, he may not be able to deal with them. I, I don't want to resign in, uh, in the scene. I am not pessimistic, I'm, but I think this is a very major challenge. If uh, the, the government uh, will address this issue, at least it will help us in terms of diversifying our economy. And um, uh, perhaps we may be out of uh, the doldrum. These issues that we are having, all sorts of economic problems, uh, I think the side time for the government to diversify. We look at uh, solid mineral. We have them in abundance. Uh, like uh, here in the north, we have gold. We have so many other things which uh, even the government is not talking about. Mm. Uh, perhaps we seem to like uh, easy money. Uh, that is why we are where we are now. Okay, uh, some stories, um, or most of the stories on the Nation newspaper where we're moving to are the same as we've already taken from other newspapers. But there's this, there's this picture, even though we don't have bull headlines there, there's this picture of a before and after uh, indicating or showing when some refineries that are termed illegal, okay, let me call them that as much, illegal refineries were being uh, bombarded somewhere in the south-south. River State. River State. So uh, this is happening, which means there are refineries that are producing fuel here in Nigeria, and the government is bombarding it. So I'm just asking this in light of the fact that sometimes when uh, oil is... They, they catch some thieves with oil on the high sea, all they do is burn the ship and the oil with it. They find a refinery that is refining oil somewhere. All they do is burn. Nobody gets arrested. Nobody gets prosecuted, even if they are arrested and all that. And I don't know what we are really heading to. What are your thoughts on the fact that there are refineries in Nigeria doing the work uh, that uh, we buy fuel from other countries, uh, people who are doing somewhere mm -hmm. in the outside the country, and then we are only bombarding it and we're not thinking about... When these about, illegal yes. refineries could be used to service those areas, for instance, imagine if they cut off what is sent to River State mm -hmm. and you use these illegal refineries that have been found to service the fuel need of River State. Maybe we're just uh, talking. What, is you your, what are your thoughts about this? There are refineries in Nigeria, uh, home-built by Nigerians, and they are being destroyed almost every day. And then we are clapping for the security forces. What are your are thoughts we about this? Are you clapping? Uh, I'm not clapping. One, it, is quite, it is quite unfortunate that we are having this. Uh, this shows the level of corruption uh, in Nigeria. Secondly, um, you know, it shows uh, it's a kind of cover up. Because by the time you are destroying mm. these things, you don't investigate, which means you don't take measures to find out who are 
guilty I mm -hmm. mean who are involved and then deal with them that is the second thing the third thing is that um, uh, instead of destroying this thing when we get them uh, the government should investigate and find out who are there and uh, perhaps those who are not guilty you can even use them to develop uh, small refineries you mm -hmm. see Cottage industries and the small scale industries are what uh, are moving the economy. So by the time you destroy all these things and you don't punish who are involved, I think we'll be still dependent on importation of oil for our needs. So I think it is um, a bad policy. Uh, it is it is amount it amounts to cover up because some uh, people you know who are involved we wouldn't know them. Thirdly, it will not deter uh, similar action because people will go. And fourthly, we are losing the potential of developing our own uh, small refineries that will be used. Oh, thank you so much, Professor Kamilu Sani Fage, for your time this morning on Off the Press. Thank you very much. Professor Kamilu Sani Fage, a political affairs analyst, has joined us from Kano State on Off the Press. You're still watching Off the Press. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV <laughs> Africa. We're done with Off the Press. Mm -hmm. We'll be back to give you the first hot topic. Stay with us. <laughs>